How many of you? Um, I think I, I do think there are a lot of uh, business heads here, in whatever capacity, as uh, CEOs, promoters, owners, vertical heads, right? Yeah, I'm saying there are a lot of. Uh, no, no, I, I'm saying there are a lot of uh, business heads here, right? So I have a question. How many of you have felt that you know you can grow your business many times fold? If only you were sure that your people could take your ideas and make it happen. How many of you have, have had, yes, you for one, great. Anyone else? How many of you? Two? OK. Anyone more from the, those who are in a leadership role? Yes. Yeah. I think this is, yes. <laughs> yes. I think it's fairly representative. Yeah. In my work, I have interacted with uh, many CEOs, promoters, owners. And one of the common theme I hear from them is, Gauri, there is no dearth of ideas. There is no uh, dearth of opportunities. What I wish this, I had the confidence in my team that they can take this and make it happen and make it into a reality. Okay. If across the board, I think 80-90% of the leaders are feeling this. I think we should wonder, but what is it that makes capable people in organizational settings hesitate to do something new? Right? What is it that makes people who are doing what they are very effective at what they are doing, what is it that prevents them from doing something new well, because something new effectively? Because of the results, whether it could be productive or it could change like uh, into nothing. Yeah? Yes. Absolutely, as one of the earlier speakers shared, the fear of failure, like Mr. A. N. Singh said, people don't want to move from unconscious incompetence to <laughs> conscious incompetence, right? They yeah. tend to stifle the change. Yeah? They tend to stifle the change. They tend to, yeah. Because yeah. they don't want to come out of their comfort zone. They, they absolutely. So comfort zone is one thing. They don't, this is a safety, right? It's, they feel safe. We will, we will, uh, I will be sharing about some of the top factors in, you know, why this happens a little later on. But coming back to this, you know, if, and we all talked a lot about, uh, you know, how technology is changing and a lot of debate on, uh, I, but I don't think yeah, people are going anywhere for at least the next 20, 20 years or so. So let's, let, let's stick to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least 20. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's stick to that. So in, in this VUCA world, you know, uh, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, volatile, right? If you continue doing your business the same way you have been doing for years, you are not going to grow at the rate that you want to grow. Or worse, you may start declining. So there's obviously there is something that we all need to be looking at and doing, right? And thinking at least about this. And it's very impractical that you can focus on each and every person in your organization to make them effective to make them capable, right? To effectively deliver their work. So what do, what, 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 what do we do? There is an option. We do have an option. You focus on the leaders of these people. You focus on developing their effectiveness and their capability. And through that, make the wider organization more effective and create impact across the organization. You know, research has shown that effective leader, the difference you know, an effective leader can make. And that's why I'm adding the adjective effective every time. There can be leaders and there are effective leaders. The difference effective leaders can make to business results is as much as 30%. And this is established by research. And especially in service organization, it could go up to as much as 50 to 60%. That's huge numbers. Right? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I want to talk to you today about. How, yeah. so that's what today I'm, we are going to talk about, you know, how to focus on leaders and building leadership capability so that you can make results happen, making, make plans happen. I'm going to talk to you about some specific things and the specific connections between leadership and outstanding business. Just give me a moment to, okay. 
So today, this is broadly, this is the agenda, right? Excellence, we'll talk about what it means, what it takes to get there and stay there. What comes in the way, I said we'll, you know, I told you earlier, we'll look at that a bit. And how do leaders make it happen? Yeah. And in the end, of course, time permitted, we'll also have some question and answer in case there is, yeah? I'm asking you, each of you, to think about each leader in your team and look at each of these statements and think about whether the statement holds true for most of the leaders in your organization for most of the time. I'm not saying 100%, but for most of the leaders for most of the time. Look at each statement and think about each leader. In my work, when I have in my interactions with and work with organizations, 90% of the CEOs cannot say yes to more than two. 90% of them say no to majority of this. And that's why it is difficult to have any. Yeah, could be much more. I am like rounding off. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely it could be much more. Yeah. But when you think, when you look at these statements, these are the, you know, four of the qualities that, you know, an effective leader needs to be, a part of the, you know, the repertoire of the qualities of an effective leader, right? And if you look at these, there are two themes in this, across these qualities. One theme is something the leader is himself, as in what, he is his own persona, the way the leader is. And the second theme in this is the what the leader creates, what, how the leader is and what she, he or she gets done through in, in the team, you know, how he or she builds in the organization. So these four across the thing have these two fronts. One, what the leader is himself or herself. And second, what the leader gets done through the team, through his or her team. So what happens when 90, more than 90% of the time the answer is no to many of this. What happens? Results are still happening. Why? Because then the CEO or the leader jumps into the arena, rolls up his sleeves and starts actually doing and directing and executing. He plays all the role. That's what happens most of the time. Let me pause here to share a, yeah, okay. let me actually, before the story, let me come to this. I, I told you earlier that, you know, we'll come look at some of the reasons why, why this is not happening, why people, people struggle to do something new well. And this has come from a lot of a cultural mindset also, right? Cultural society, the way, the way our society is. So first and foremost is the fixed mindset. So, there is, it, so trying, admitting I don't know and learning something new is seen as a sign of incompetence. So most people hesitate to try something new. And, and Mr. Singh has also talked about it in his, covered about it in, 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 uh, in the, you know, the path to moving from unconscious to conscious, unconscious competence, unconscious, yeah, right? Yeah. So. Second thing, second important reason, I think these are only the top few factors, right, from my own, uh, you know, work and research. Second important thing is most people are not exposed to what is excellence, what is best. You know, what does best look like? What does excellence look like? So they equate working very hard, putting in long hours. My, I have my best intention at heart. In fact, I'm coaching a, a very senior business leader whose complaint is, I work so hard, I work on the weekend. But his CEO is so unhappy because he's not able to deliver the results. I don't care whether he works on the weekend, but he's not doing what he's supposed to do. So the so best intention long workers are equated to being doing my best. And the third thing is the big picture. In fact, again, uh, uh, Prashant uh, shared in his uh, presentation very 
about the brand X. That the workers, even the workers in the in the training are told what the business is about and not what they have to do. Huh? But unfortunately, in most companies, the employees either are not, are not interested in knowing the big picture or why or the purpose behind what they are, you know, what why they are doing what they are doing, or the managers don't tell them. The leaders don't take effort to communicate it to them. So they don't know the big pictures. So they work in silos, they're just doing their own task. And also the current learning design also em emphasizes a lot of you know, rote learning right from school and higher education institution. You're not prepared to experiment and fail and learn from mistakes. The, 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 the system doesn't prepare the people coming into the workforce for that. So there's a lot of challenges which you know, a, a leader faces when he has in managing his team. And here I want to pause to tell you the story. So the story of an over business head. Right? So I was working a couple of years ago with a, a company, with the, with, the, with the CEO of the company. So they were in a, uh, they were in a fairly successful you know, business. The clients were happy with them. And they, the, client, the existing client themselves uh, wanted them to start a new product line. So the CEO was very excited. It's a great opportunity. It's, you know, it's a great ex expansion. But he was very unsure that he was, didn't have the confidence in his team at all that they can do something new like this. But they were already facing problems with you know, timely delivery, you know, quality issues, and which they were always, always firefighting and you know, somehow managing it. You know, every day was you know, chaotic, but they were somehow <coughs> delivering. But he wasn't sure they can take up the new opportunity. So when we started working with him, so we started working with him on two fronts. So one was on how he is leading his team, his own approach to leadership. How he is looking at it, you know, how he is getting work done from his team. The second was, what are the team practices and habits that he is instilling or developing? These are the two fronts in which we started working with him. So in the, in, as part of the thing, what emerged was when we are started having conversations with him in terms of how, we, uh, how he is leading, we observed three things, very important. One was that he has a very directive style. He always is telling his team members what to do, how to do, and closely monitoring it. So the, his team, even the, the, his next level, the senior leaders, were not really taking ownership on what they, were, what they had to do. So they are, second, even when he ran meetings, review meetings, or you know, planning meetings, he would do most of the talking. So the, the, even the, his next line leader, the, their uh, job was sit and share some statistics and hear, hear the boss. And the third, the, so when I interviewed the, his uh, you know, direct reports and a few uh, people below, and I asked him, what do you understand about your responsibility? What do you think is your responsibility? They said, it's pretty much to do what the boss tells us to do, which showed a significant, great lack of you know, ownership and understanding of their role and contribution. So the effect was that they would run to him for every problem, big or small, and the boss was very happy solving everybody's problem. And he was getting more and more and more problems to solve because as the business grows, it just adds on and on and on. And he didn't have any time to you know, expand or to do the other things that he wants to look at new product clients and stuff. Everybody was feeling stressed and depressed because even the people were not feeling fulfilled. So we started a coaching conversations with him. And in that process, we helped him to realize a few things. One, he is not, he didn't, doesn't know how to get work done from his team. That was one of the things. Made him aware of his own style of leadership, right? Second, he is not able to give clarity and direction setting to his team. And the third was, he is unable to coach and develop his team so that they can take up the responsibility. So what was happening was net net, each level in the organization, each level of leadership in the organization was doing the job of the next level. So it kept ca cascading down. So that was a very interesting uh, this thing. So in, in through through the through the project through the process, what we uh, when we worked with him, you know, through coaching and through uh, team based interventions, we taught him skills on four things. One, how to set expectations, and demand and ask for plans from the team. How to, set, how to set the uh, expectations around the outcomes he wants, what are the goals of the business, and what, do you, what, 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 what does he want from the team. Second, we taught him skills on how to, be, uh, how to 
hold review meetings, hold people accountable, and uh, help and uh, help to you know, discuss and debate the ideas and plans they have with them. Third, we taught him skills on how to coach and develop his team in through these discussions. And fourth, we helped him to be more self-aware in terms of the way he is operating, how it is impacting his team. So this was the, and of course, I continued staying in touch with them for the next year, year and a half, and it, you know, th things are shaping. It's, 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 it's always a spiral, right? It's never a one end. You are always going up the spiral. So, so this is, the, I, I, I wanted to share this story as, because it's not a unique challenge. Somebody, one of the delegates here asked earlier that, you know, technology is increasing. How do we get the people to ramp up to it, right? So, so this is the path to excellence. So, what the, the, the I, I shared the story of you know uh, uh, of that you know work with the client to set the ground for this. This is the path to excellence. You know, where the leader needs to work on two things. One is the leader's individual habits, how he himself, what he brings to the table, and second, what is the team habits that he helps to nurture and develop. And that set the standards of excellence. And excellence is not just about setting the habits in place. It's about repeatedly and consistently holding up the standards every time. Right? So the leader basically has to do one thing. One, he has to be very deliberate and precise in repeatedly and consistently doing some things himself the way he is and helping his team to do something. And as you keep doing that deliberately, consistently, consciously, that's when you set a culture of excellence in the organization. Now, I wanted to leave you with this. Think about these. What can you do on Monday? When you get back to your office, when you get back to your work, we can think about these. And see, are these things there? If they are there, to what extent they are there? What are the standards on which these are run? If they are already existing, right? You could prepare for a 100 meter uh, race by working one hour a day, practicing one hour a day, or you could prepare for it by practicing eight hours a day. That, so you could do the same thing. Ultimately, the two people both are preparing for the race. But what is the standard of excellence that you are setting? Right? What are the standards to which you are holding these processes and these habits to? And how repeatedly and consistently are you doing? These are some of the things you can think about as you start get back to work on Monday. And when you start on this path and you start addressing, these are examples, but they cover most of it, the majority of it. There could be. More. When you start thinking about each of this and start working on each of this, you will see that slowly and slowly and slowly, the same people, the same team. They are helping you more and more to make your plans happen. <coughs> so one of the one of my clients' his favorite statement is that the people I have with me are the right people. I don't need anyone new. <laughs> so yeah, and that's pretty much true. You will never get there is no perfect set of people you know uh, out there in Mars. So, but what as a leader, your duty, your responsibility, is to see what you are bringing to the table as a leader, be self-aware, and see what you are helping build in the team. What is the kind of culture building in the team? What are the standards you are setting? What is the discipline? There is also a slide on discipline. It's very, very good, uh, this thing. On, you know, uh, you shared, Shant, yeah. The discipline is extremely important. What is it? So how are you helping that culture be created? I'm open to any questions. Otherwise, we're all waiting for lunch. So.